What's up everybody, welcome back to Scars and Whiskey for our next review. Today's review is going to be the Camacho Blackout. Now this is a cigar that was actually released in 2013 uh, by the Camacho brand and it was uh, ex expressing a new uh, process uh, called press fermentation. And what that means is the, the there's a term they call pilon, which is where they stack the, the tobacco in piles and then they take uh, a weight or some type of massive, uh, you know, something to sit on top of those pilones. So as they as they uh, age, uh, they're pressed. And I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes to the blend. I think it might be the way the air circulates around the tobaccos. Uh, but that was what was introduced with this cigar brand in 2013. Now, I'm not sure if you could find these cigars in all of your shops. I came across this about a week ago in one of my local shops. It was actually on one of their clearance areas. Apparently, they've had it for a while, and it just hasn't been a big hit in that shop. But I don't ever want to assume just because one shop doesn't think it's a hit doesn't mean it's not a good cigar. Because, again, you know, every palate's different. Uh, but the wrapper is Honduran, and the binder and filler are both Nicaraguan. Now, the Honduran wrapper uh, is supposedly is a 2006. Uh, the binder is a 2009 Nicaraguan, and then the filler is Nicaraguan, but I also know they put some Honduran and Brazilian wrapper in there together. So, ultimately, you have a cigar with, uh, with uh, f f uh, three types of tobacco from Honduras, Nicaragua and Brazil but as you can see it is a dark wrapper which I'm assuming is why they call it blackout because man all the tobacco they use throughout the whole cigar even the binder and filler is really dark so I'm a big fan of the dark cigars and that's just me uh, but man this it was about uh, originally it was about eleven dollars and as I said I got a discount so I got it for like 40% off, which is great. Uh, but if you do find them, you could pay up as high as $11, or you might find them on a discount rack. So we'll be right back, and we'll have more with our first uh, pre-draw. Getting off the foot of the cigar, we're getting like a like a dark cocoa, almost like a, a mocha flavor. Just a little bit of sweetness. Let me go ahead and uh, cut the end here. got a good draw getting a cocoa flavor like a baking uh, baker's cocoa um, or a non-sweetened cocoa but so far that's what I'm getting on the draw not too much other than like a dark sweetness cocoa flavor and we're back with our first third Right off the bat, we're getting a, a little bit of a, a black pepper on the top of my top lip. A little bit of a tingle. It's not bad, but it's just a little interesting that it just appeared like that. Now, I did have an issue uh, with the part of the wrap run towards the top there. It started to unravel a little bit, so I'll probably leave this a billboard band on as long as I can before I take it off. Uh, because... I'm not sure if this cigar was released in 2013 when they initially released the line. It might have been sitting in the in the humidor at the shop that I bought it from for a while. And sometimes you find out that the wrappers are really delicate on these on cigars, and sometimes just a little bit of age or a little bit of different uh, temperatures uh, cause them to crack and also come unraveled. So. I'm not saying that's the case in this uh, in for this shop because I've never had a really bad cigar from them at all, and uh, it just might be me. I don't know. As you can see, though, get a really good amount of smoke off the cigar. 
And like I said, right now all I can really taste is that little bit of a zing from some black pepper and a little bit of what I would consider a sweetness from cocoa. It's not overpowering sweet, but just a little bit to change the profile, just a little bit on the, on the front of the tongue. But so far, a, a typical dark Maduro uh, flavor profile, uh, something that I'm a fan of. I love the dark cigars. Uh, so we're back with our second third. Welcome back, everybody, for the second third of our review, the Camacho Blackout. Second third, we're getting a little more leather flavor profile and a little more of like a bitter coffee profile. Uh, but it's really not really changing uh, dramatically. Uh, I do like the fact that it's uh, one of those simple profiles all the way through uh, for as far as flavors. Uh, Strength-wise, I would say this uh, cigar at this point is a medium to full, not so much a full strength cigar uh, just yet. I'm not sure if it'll ever get to a full strength, uh, but uh, unfortunately I didn't see anything about it saying what kind of strength it was initially. So uh, we'll, we'll play it by ear and see how it goes, and uh, we'll be back with our final third. Welcome back, everybody, for the final third of our review of the Camacho Blackout. In the final third, uh, we're getting a little more of the full flavored, a little bit of a nicotine kick, uh, but it's pretty good. Uh, I would say now the strength of the cigar is more of a low, full flavored. It's not so overpowering, but it's there. And uh, still getting the same, a little bit of leather, a little bit of that uh, burnt coffee flavor, and a little bit of the cocoa. But all in all, a really good cigar. Uh, this, like I said, uh, something to try if you haven't seen it. It has been out for a few years. I'm not even sure if it's still available. I've only seen it a couple times in uh, shops that still had it or they had it clearanced. Uh, but if you're able to get it, I would suggest having it and trying it. And if it's something you like, hopefully you can get some more of it. But if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. Always leave your comments. Have a great day. Have a great smoke. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.